Jack them up, boys. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and and make use of it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. Let's uh, take our Bibles and turn to John 14. And we're going to kind of uh, move around today. Um, week before last, I... Uh, I posed a question, is uh, is sickness paid for in the atonement? Okay. We found out it was. Scripturally, it was. Okay. So, today I want to talk about, uh, was peace paid for in the atonement? You know, it, the Bible tells us to let the peace of God rule our hearts. And one of the things that we do, uh, for whatever reason, um, and some of us have been, you know, in, in reflecting just a little bit on, on the sickness being paid for in the atonement, um, Whether you realize it or not, Billy has been really sick, and I shared that I'd been sick. Uh, or I'd had some challenges, physical challenges, um, and all of those things are covered by in the atonement. and And doesn't mean that it's going to be a miracle every time. So, what have I got to do to have the peace of God rule my heart? Uh, that doesn't necessarily, if we look at the things going on in the world today. Um, you may or may, may not uh, agree with some of the things that are going on. Um, and this isn't a political uh, statement, but there's a lot of things going on in the world today. Hey, we can look at the things that uh, uh, in, in, in uh, five days, they shot down things over the United States. We can look at, okay, is the end here? Um, we can look at a lot of different things that can make us feel like there's things going on that we don't like, we don't understand, and we go along and, and think, uh, you know, and I've, I, uh, I've chosen not to uh, pay attention to the, the news over the last couple of weeks just because it doesn't make me happy. I decided I was going to do things that make me happy. Um, which doesn't mean that is we stick our head in the sand, but we got We get in the Word and we look and see what does the Word say about letting the peace of God rule our hearts. So, John fourteen twenty seven. I think I said seven. It was twenty seven. Um, Jesus said this: "Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you." Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. And sometimes we get in a position that we can look at things going on, look at things around us, look at challenges that we may have in our own home, challenges that we may have in our work. The fact that 
You know, I, I think it's, um, I, get, I get home and I, I didn't pay attention to what fuel was today, but um, it was uh, in the $3 and 50 or 60 cents when I got home. Well, when I was in Florida, it was $4 and 27 cents. And so, you know, it's, we, we live in a, in, in a place that see, things seem to be a little bit less expensive. Uh, but I never thought I would be excited when I was paying $3.50 or $0.60 cents instead of the, the $4 and something. Well, am I going to let that change my peace? You can't let that change your peace. Because who is your God? Who is your source? And who takes care of things? And that was just one example because we, we, can, we can look at a lot of things uh, and uh, the price in a grocery store, um, everything that we touch. And we have to remember, has peace been paid for in my atonement? Because sometimes that could make us go, well, you know, my wages didn't go up. My... Income didn't go up. My Social Security didn't go up. Why We have to look at the fact that none of those places are my source. All of those places are places that God has furnished me to be able to get some finances, but that's still not my source. My source's name is Jehovah Jireh. God is more than enough. We look at uh, uh, everything that is in that name and we realize that everything uh, that uh, what does Jehovah Shalom what does that mean peace the God of peace turn to John 16 33 red letter again if you have a red letter edition these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. You know, and that's kind of what I've been talking about. There's been a lot of things that have, that have been going on that are problems that are, that are in the world. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We realize we are not moved by the things that go on around us. We're moved simply by who God is in us. We're moved simply by what the Word says about us. And so I'm looking at a lot of things, and we're going to skip around. You know, read, read everything that is in these chapters that we're looking at. But at the same time, um, I, I picked out some places that, that he talked to us about peace. John 20, 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I so I send you. And so we get into a position that we realize that every time that Jesus talked, I believe he kept talking about peace, 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 over and over and over because we've got to get it. Because sometimes we choose to worry. We can choose to... Uh, Hey, when we're not feeling good, when prices go up, when all of a sudden, um, I had a lady tell me the other day, uh, I made a comment because she was eating a payday candy bar for lunch. She said, well, I can't afford food. <laughs> Instead of just saying, man, I like that candy bar. And, 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 and that's the thing that we get in a place. Can I afford food? You bet I can because I serve a father that has more than enough for me to be taken care of. He said, he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So then again, I've got to walk in peace. Do I choose not to walk in peace sometimes? I can promise you when physically you're not feeling good, peace don't reign there. But it should reign there because I've got a covenant with God. Um, we... Uh, I. I we sang a song about the covenant. And, and that's the thing we have to realize. All the things we're looking at, and the reason that I'm doing this uh, over the, these weeks 
about is it paid for in the atonement? Our peace, is it paid for? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. It tells us that uh, he uh, took a crown of thorns so that we could be at peace. We look at the things that uh, he was done. He paid, so that was something that was paid for in the atonement in that place. It wasn't just what, how he hung on the cross. It was everything that led up to that and everything that, that happened after that. When he rose again, he said, I conquered the world. He, he conquered Satan. I, I believe this. I believe that, that had Satan known what God, God was going to do and how the Holy Spirit was going to raise Jesus from the dead, he had never got involved. He had left him alone. But you realize that that was the plan of God that to atone us for all these things, so that we wouldn't have to worry about things like that, so that we could have peace in, in things like that. Turn to uh, Acts chapter 9. Now, I've challenged you from time to time to read while you're turning to Acts chapter 9. I think it's verse 31 we're going to look at, but... Um, I'll get back there in a minute. I've challenged you to read Acts through four times in 30 days without stopping to study back and forth. Just read it through. And so if you've done that, you realize that leading up to chapter 9, there was a lot of things that went on. There were uh, uh, Peter and John got thrown into prison. Um, there, there were, you know, we get into the place when we get into chapter 9 and and on through there, we realize that one of the things that has been happening is Paul's been in trouble. Uh, Paul's uh, got, uh, in chapter 10, Paul has his name changed from Saul to Paul. Uh, we realize that there's a lot of things that, that lead up to those positions. So cha Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then the churches throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. And walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. One of the things that stands out in this place is we have got to depend on the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into that peace. And one of the things that we do is, is when we pray in the Spirit, we realize there's a peace that comes with praying in the Spirit. There's a peace that comes, and, and we don't even know what we're praying for. We don't even know. The Bible says that, that the, the uh, Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God and prays for things that we don't know how to. And so when we get into that place, we realize there's a peace that comes in there. We, there, there if, if we don't depend on the Holy Spirit as well as the Holy Spirit makes the word plain to us. And, and we realize it's just talking about everyday life. It's not some mystery. Well, I can't really understand what it says. Read it. Ask God to, to give you revelation. Without revelation, we die. Without revelation, we don't, we're not able to walk in the peace that, or the, or the uh, fulfillment of, of uh, health, uh, of divine health that God has promised for each one of us. Uh, Romans 10.36. Romans 10.36 says, The word of God which was sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. We realize that peace comes through Jesus Christ. We realize that without Jesus Christ, we don't have the Holy Spirit. He said, when I go to the Father, I'll send you a comforter. I'll send you the Holy Spirit to, to remind you of things that I've said and tell you of things to come. So we realize when we depend on, on Jesus to send us the Holy Spirit and, and to guide us into those things and to teach us the things that are to come and teach us what he said, remind us, hey, I paid for your peace. Um, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I, I've chosen to worry, and then I realize, what am I worrying for? Because he's the source. 
I, I, I have no reason to worry because he's the source in all things. And in that challenge we get into, and I always tell people it's a, you know, it's hard to build a house when you're in a storm. Whatever that storm is, it, it, it's hard to believe through that storm. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And, and when you study it out, the sin against God isn't uh, the things that we call sin. The sin against God is unbelief. And so David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might believe you, that I might walk into you. I talked a few weeks ago about the, the measure of faith that we've been given. What do you do with that measure of faith? Well, I, I use that measure of faith, and, and you can say, well, that makes my faith grow. It makes your belief grow. It makes that belief begin to be more and more. We've all been given the measure of faith. We all have the same faith to be able to believe him. How come some people believe him more? Because we study this word, we realize this word makes a difference in what we believe and how we believe it. And we come into a position that I start getting that peace that comes over me because I've read. He left me peace. You know, as I was reading this this morning and reading through this and, and, uh, and, and looking up uh, things that Jesus said about peace, I realized... Over and over and over. I believe that he said it so many times to the disciples because he wanted us to get it. He wanted us to walk in that peace. He wanted them to not worry. Um, they did. When he, when he got crucified, all of a sudden it was like, ah. But again, what did they do? They knew when he rose from the dead that he did exactly what he said. I will challenge you to walk in belief and realize God will do everything he says every time he says it and there is no new thing under the sun there is no new problem under the sun you know we can look at uh, and, and I'm going to talk about this for a minute again about uh, the things going on in Washington well you look at the disciples what things were going on in Rome were they killing Christians? Yeah, they were killing Christians. Were they trying to rule everything they did? They did. Were they having to pay uh, horrendous taxes? Yes, they did. So we look at this thing and we realize there's no new thing under the sun. All I've got to do is, is I've got to, it's different. You know, they didn't have television then. We got television now so we can uh, camp on the constant negative news and get negative thinking instead of reading the Word and getting the positive thinking and realizing that, that this is going to change. Um, I got to tell you, at my house, every once in a while, uh, Kathleen's looking for something to, to uh, watch that doesn't have to do with the news and and the news will be on, and she's got it muted. And I want to go, hey, just unmute it for a minute, just so I could hear, okay? But, but she keeps it muted because we don't want to feed ourselves on that negative stuff. We want to, do I want to know what's going on in the world? Maybe. But am I better off to know what the Word says about me? Then what's going on in the world? Yes, I am. Because if I do realize what's going on in me through the Word, then I don't have to worry about what's going on in the world. Hey, here's what I know. Somebody asked me the other day, so do you think this is the end? This was somebody that, and right now I don't remember who it was, so I guess I'm blessed in that, in that part, but I remembered when they asked me, I didn't even know they knew what the end was about. I didn't even know that if they were a Christian or not, whoever it was. Um, and, and so when I think about this, um, yeah, I do remember who it was. And I figured out he was a Christian by the time it was all over. But um, he, he delivered a piece of equipment that I'm using at the property right now. And, and he asked me, he says, you think it's the end? Here's what I said. I'm still here. So here's what I know. The rapture hasn't happened yet because I'm going to be gone when that happens. Um, I had a guy ask me one time uh, about that. Now, now this, is, this is realizing 
that not everybody walks in the same peace that you do. We were laying under the 32 Chevrolet when I was rebuilding that. And this guy was helping me put the rear end in it. And he, he looked around to make sure nobody was listening. And he says, so what do you think? Do you think it's the, it's, it's the end? Is the end about here? I had the keys to the 32 in my hand, in my pocket. I reached in my pocket. I handed them to him. And I said, when the end's here and I'm gone, you can have my car. <laughs> and this is what he said. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to go too. Um, and, and so he had an understanding of what it took. Um, I'm just going to say that uh, I, I hope he's made that decision. Romans chapter 5. Verse 1 to 5. And this is where we, 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 when we get into the epistles, we start putting everything together. We start looking about, Acts is about what the disciples did. It's called Acts because it was the Acts of the disciples. Uh, and so, and not just the 12, but the, um, the many disciples. Then we get into the epistles and we look. Uh, this is a uh, Romans was written by Paul to the Romans. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Being justified. Here, see, we got to take that, that faith that God gave us. The measure of faith. And we've got to let the peace of God Rule our heart. We're, hey, we have peace with God. Why do I have peace with God? Because I have a covenant with God. Because when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, then all of a sudden I'm at peace with God. I'm, I'm not, he's not against me. He's for me. He's about everything that I have to do. He's about everything that comes against me or has a bearing on my life. And that's the thing that we have to, to realize. Through whom we also have access by faith into the grace in which we stand. Rejoice. Can you rejoice if you're not at peace? Pretty hard. What are you going to rejoice in? I've got to rejoice in the fact that God loved me so much that he gave me everything I need. Always. Access of faith to grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that the tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. When you look up this word hope, it's the same word that was used in 1 Thessalonians 1.3. If you have a Spirit-filled life Bible, the meaning of hope is right there. It says, it, it, you know, when we say hope, we go, well, you know, I hope that happens. I hope they do what they said they'd do. But that's not what this hope means. This hope means that it calls things that don't exist as though they already do as such as living by faith. And that's what that word means. When we get into that place, we realize my hope in God means I believe that he is who he says he is and he'll do what he says he'll do. And so when I get into that position, then I've got to let the peace of God rule my heart because my faith is in him. My belief is in Him, in everything that He does. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. What, what did Jesus say about our heart? He said, my father and I will come and make our home inside of you. So we realize that 
not only should I have peace, but because they live in me, uh, that, that peace should radiate from me. Not just be in me, but it should be something that everybody can see. How come you're, at, you're okay with it? what's going on? Well, you know, I didn't say I liked it, but I didn't say I'm worried about it. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to get in that position. Hey, I'm no different than anybody else. I go to the pump and, and pay $3.67 for fuel. It doesn't make me happy. I don't like it. But I happen to know that my Father supplies all of my needs according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So I don't have to worry about it. And that's the thing that we have to do. We have to re realize that there's some things you may not like, but let the peace of God rule your heart in that place. Um, eggs. I realize eggs have, have been really expensive in the grocery store, okay? Hey, guess what? I found a place where they're about a third of that money. Um, go to Costco or Sam's Club. Um, you know, some of the things you have to do, you have to realize, we have choices. Let God lead you in the choices that you make. Make good choices because God leads you by His Spirit in those places. And, and we get into that position because we're able, able to do that. I thank God always, verse 4, thank God always concerning you for the grace of God which has been given to you by Christ Jesus, that you being enriched in everything by Him, enriched in everything by Him. That means everything. That doesn't just mean salvation. That means everything. Say this with me, everything. So I don't have to worry about anything because everything has been enriched to me. By Him in all utterance and all knowledge. So for me to say the right thing, I've got to have the knowledge. I've got to have a revelation of who God is. I've got to put that word in. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Even the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So that you came, so that you come short of no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of His Son. Christ Jesus our Lord. God is faithful to give us all the inheritance that we have. All of the things that we need. We're enriched in life. And, and sometimes I believe if we're not careful, we don't live like we're in, enriched in life. We live like, sometimes like we got more worry than the next guy down the street does. And it would be a shame if we lived like somebody that didn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and, and had that kind of thinking because we have the answer. We've been enriched. Enriched. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 to 7 says, Grace to you and peace from our God and Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So where does peace come from? From our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Where else does peace come from? Revelation knowledge of them. How am I going to get revelation knowledge? Two ways. I'm going to get it by the Holy Spirit but I've got to put the word in. If the, if the Holy Spirit's going to remind me of things that, that he said, I've got to put in things that he said. I've got to read that word because you, I don't know, nobody here looks like they're old enough to have walked with him on the face of this earth. But we get into a place that we realize that if we read the word, he's been talking to us. Sometimes through the Holy Spirit, he'll talk to us where, where we really feel like we've been sitting there with him because we've been reading his word, we've been listening to the Holy Spirit, and then he's just been speaking into us. Hey, don't worry about it. I got it. And that's what we have to remember. He's got it. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble and be comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So when somebody else has got something, they've been going, oh man, I've been worried about this or this or this. We're supposed to comfort them. How can I comfort them if I'm not at peace? How can I comfort them if I'm not have a revelation? I haven't thought about this in years. And, and uh, you know, dad's been gone for a couple of years. And, but there's something that, that stood out to me. And this is, this is the God that we serve. I remember one time I was taking care of one of my dad's friends who was on vacation, their dog. And this guy caught me on the street. The dog never messed in these people's yard. Um, this guy catches me on the street. And he chewed me out about it. I went home and told my dad. I, I don't remember. I wasn't maybe eight or nine years old. You know, you know what I remember about that? This is the God we serve, okay? I got a picture right then of how, how God takes care of me and covers me. I got this. That's what God says. My dad went down. He knocked on that guy's door. He said, this is my son. And he says, you called him a liar. My dad says, my son don't lie. And don't you ever call him a liar again. Guy says, he's a liar. I thought my dad was going to take the screen door off this place going after that guy. Now, I'm not advocating that, 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 that we should fight or anything. What I am advocating is that's the God we serve. He says, I got this. He be the God that if something came against you in that way, he be the God that would go ahead and take the screen door off and go after whoever it was. When the Satan is, is, is on you or telling you something, that, that was a picture I got of, of how it's, al it's always been easy for me to believe God because the dad that I had served God, loved God, and, and my dad always had my back, no matter what it was. Now, if I was wrong, I got told about it later, but um, I don't remember being wrong. And dad's not here to tell me differently, right? <laughs> All right. That wasn't about dad. That was about it. our God covering us. Going, man, this he, he, he or she is mine. And don't you touch them. That's what he says. Don't touch them. So I've got to believe that I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. The day that I'm not going to be okay, it's because I met him in the air. And, and I'm going to be way okay then. For the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer, or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and your salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know as you are partakers of the suffering, you'll also be take partakers of the consolation. What is the consolation? The consolation is the covenant that God made with us that we'll live live in life and rule in life and be able to have the things that God says are ours. So we, again, we get into that place that we realize because of the consolation of, of God and Jesus Christ, I don't have to worry about stuff. Titus 1.4 To Titus, 
a true son in our common faith, grace and mercy and peace from our God and Father, the Lord Je and, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. What you find through the apostles, the, the epistles, is every epistle talks about the fact that grace and mercy are tied with peace. So if the grace and mercy are tied with peace, then I have to realize that was all part of my salvation. That was all part of what was taken care of at the cross is my peace. Just because the fact that all three of them are tied together in every place that you look in there. Philemon, last scripture this morning. Philemon 1.3. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. So where does peace come from? Peace comes from dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. Dependence on God the Father being who he said he was. You know, it goes all the way back to the place that I have to realize that God made a plan before he created Adam and Eve, he made a plan because he already knew that, that Adam and Eve were going to commit treason. They were going to do what God asked them not to do, so we call it sin. Um, he, uh, he already knew that we were going to need to have a, a blood covenant. So he made a plan before he even created Adam and Eve to send Jesus Christ for us so that we could ha be, have right standing, so that we could have righteousness with God again, so that we could move into that place that I could have peace, that I could have grace, and that I could have mercy. And when I realized that God made that plan before it was ever needed, I also realized that... Uh, he put uh, gold and onyx in the river Euphrates uh, before there was a Walmart to spend the money in. So he makes plans for our provision before we ever need that provision. So if that's the case, what, what would I worry about? Because I've been feeding myself on the wrong stuff. Because I've been listening to everything that's going on, that I've been... And, 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 and again, I'm not, I'm not telling you to be happy about everything that's going on, but be at peace. So if it takes making myself happy, then I'm going to get in the Word and I'm going to preach myself happy. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to read it and I'm going to talk to myself. I, and of course, I read the Word out loud and, 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 and I learned that from my, from my dad because... Even to the day that my dad was living by himself, when he had his devotions at night, he read the Bible out loud to himself so that he would hear it, so that he would listen to it, so that we would get in. And so I learned that at a young age. We, uh, I grew up in a house that uh, it didn't matter what time you came home. If you'd been on a date when I was a teenager, when I came home, dad sat down with you and read the Bible at night and we and, and then we did that every night no matter when it was no matter what time it was and so I realized I grew up in a place that I realized not everybody did and and um and it becomes something that you can let go of you can not keep that habit going and from time to time I have to bring myself back so that I'm reading that word out loud to myself, so that I'm paying attention to what's going on and what it's saying, so that I can live in peace, so that I can walk in peace, so that I can live in the grace and the mercy and the divine health that God has paid for in that place. I don't want to make a plan not to walk in either, any of the above. I want to make a plan to walk in those places all the time. And, and if I'm going to make that plan, then I've got to study this word. In case the tablet dies, I've got to study this word so that we know what the word says, so that we get into a place that I can share with somebody else that's not at peace. You know, that's what it's really about. 
It's not just so that I can have peace. But if I have the answer and, and he or she doesn't, maybe they can come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Or maybe they can study the word to get set free. If, I, if I've got the word hidden in my heart, then I've got something to share with them so that they can walk in peace too. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity that you give us to live in a country that we can come and worship you. And Father, we came today to worship you. Thank you for the peace that has been shed abroad in our hearts by your spirit. Father, thank you for the grace and the mercy that you've given to us. And Father, as we walk in these things, that we'll walk in peace because of what you've done. In the name of Jesus, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. Well, as you've watched the, the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that his plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the word, we realize that the word, uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that will be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe, means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, uh, for any of you, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and, or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry, realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and by his blood, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.